Well, Bruce, folks probably realize that being a vegetable station, you, you research a lot of different things, and that would include squash, beans, tomatoes, asparagus, all kinds of vegetables. But we're taking advantage of the shade right now and taking a look at another variety trial that's come ripe, and that's the watermelons. And this is a tempting view to me as lunchtime approaches. Um, what are you looking for in a variety trial for watermelons? In addition to the commercial varieties that are available for sale that are produced in Oklahoma as well as other states, we test seed that are entered by growers, um, land grant institutions mm -hmm. in other states uh, would enter a number of lines that would be tested in Oklahoma to see how they produce. So this is cooperative research that goes on in other southern uh, land grant colleges as well? That, that's true. We have okay. uh, watermelons here that uh, have been developed in Florida and other states. Uh -huh. Well, When and you're researching the, the melons and you're pulling them out of the field, they're ripe, but how do, it's kind of a subjective thing to people of, of how good a watermelon tastes. If you're doing research on it, how do you uh, write that all down and, and get that into a statistical form. Well, yield data is uh, one of the things we look at. So that's weight. Right. Uh -huh. We're, we'll harvest and weigh the various melons. Uh, we cut them open and evaluate the internal characteristics, color, uh -huh. flavor, taste. Um, a measure that would tell you something other than, than just what you look at and think about it would be how sweet it is as determined by the refractometer. Okay, so you dribble a little juice on we, there. We place the juice on the surface mm -hmm. of this instrument. All right. It uh, technically reads soluble solids mm -hmm. rather than just sugar, but the line in here from the light is reflected and reads higher as the melon is sweeter. Okay. So we sample a number of melons from each variety and have this in addition to the ratings, we would look for disease problems, mm -hmm. uh, general notes as to what the melon looks like. Okay, and, and like and within a variety, do you give the percent that have to be culled out that wouldn't be marketable? Right, there would be okay. ratings for misshapen melons. All right. Uh, well, now the, this first one we looked at is a nice oblong with seed in it, but as most home gardeners know, the seedless melons have become a, a real popular item in both commercial and home trade. Now, is that what we're looking at right here? Yes, okay. yes. There's a number of triploid melons. Triploid, that's the proper you, term for a seedless. Huh? You, you buy the seed. You, uh, If you're going to grow it yourself, there's a number of things to be aware of. Mm -hmm. The uh, seed don't, don't germinate as well. Okay, kind of like super sweet corn, I guess it's... There's, there's some challenges involved. Uh-huh. Um, they can certainly be grown. Ooh, look at that. They're not guaranteed to be 100% free of seed, but mm -hmm. very often are. Okay. They uh, need another variety to pollinate. All right. This, this variety. And a person would be well advised that the pollinator be either a different color or a different shape. So that when you plant the two out in the field and you go to harvest your seedless, you can distinguish that between your, your seeded pollinator exactly variety. Exactly right. Okay, the big question, I'm sure, going around the donut shops and the coffee shops is, how do you get seed from a seedless watermelon? It's a hybrid. A lot of the melons and a lot of the other crops that are being grown are hybrids. Uh -huh. So it's necessary to cross a, a specific female line which has different genetics than the pollinator line. Uh -huh. And the resulting seed produce these plants, which are sterile. Okay. They, they cannot produce a viable mm -hmm. seed. There's, there's a minor, uh, a small seed coat occasionally. Yeah, this little white right here. That was a in seed that. that could not develop. Uh -huh. So in order to have seed, to have more seedless melons, that same hybrid cross has to be has made. Has to occur. And that's time. why your seedless melon seed costs more but uh, if you're not into spitting watermelon seeds, it's sure worth it. It's, it's a very nice melon. That's great. There's, there's a number of varieties. Uh, th this one is uh, not Crimson Trio, but it's uh -huh. one we have in the test. Millionaire uh -huh. is in the test. Uh, there's a series Queen Jack and King of Hearts. And uh, every year you test, not only with watermelons, but with tomatoes, peppers, all the different common varieties, you test the full gamut that's available that would likely be grown in this part of the country, as well as experimental lines. Right, right. Okay. The open pollinated material would mm -hmm. stay in as part of the test, as a check. Mm -hmm. uh, the better hybrid material would be also compared. 
uh, the breeding lines and the newest lines we're interested in. So. Well, that's great. Well, this is, it's interesting how, how horticulture research gets done around the country, and it has to be done site specifically as well for us to know how well something does, gets, how well something grows right in Oklahoma. And Bruce, I'd, I'd surely like to thank you for showing us around today and uh, letting us get a, a look and a taste, hopefully, of these things that are ripe right now. And about every other year, the research station holds a field day and they held one this past June and hopefully in a couple of years when more research gets done we'll open up to the public again and you can come out and, and take a look at some of these varieties. Thank you Bruce. Oh boy this looks good. Watch that. Mm. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. You can also find more recent videos on our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.